I feel as though I'm perpetually saying this, but it's been a while since we caught up. Spring is in full bloom at the moment, so I decided it was a good time to take a trip to Central Park and drink in the gardens. And of course the people. Paired with a flaky croissant and latte, of course. And what visit of mine to Central Park doesn't come with a jaunt to a museum? You already know what time it is. Today I figured I'd do some studies of Greco-Roman sculptures. Not that art history doesn't have enough of them, but I did want to examine anatomy and musculature more thoroughly. Also, just look at these poses. It's really baffling how each of these disparate figures come together to form one cohesive whole. Everyone looks so cold and distraught, don't they? If only they had a blanket, you know? I think my drawings might benefit from a light gray marker to assist with the shading, but this is as good a time as any to practice cross-hatching. Not long after my visit, I made sure to stop by Roosevelt Island to catch the cherry blossoms before they wilt. It always feels like some kind of miraculous event to catch them in full bloom since their season is so ephemeral. The short trip also offers unique views of the cityscape, if you enjoy a good building. Building a good visual vocabulary, that is. purchase that's truly changed my life in the past month is this gal. I know what you're thinking, it's just a portable washer. Wrong. For three years, I had to venture outside with all my clothes in order to make the smelly fabrics less smelly. I was really left hanging out to dry. But now, I can wash my clothes from the comfort of my own home. Isn't she lovely? Apparently we had a mega boom thunderstorm event at 6 a.m. this morning in NYC. It woke me up, but I promptly fell back asleep and clean forgot about it until I was scrolling through Twitter this afternoon. If the apocalypse ever goes down at 5 a.m., I am totally gonna sleep through that. Today I'll be working on some sketches for a small editorial job that includes a feature and a few spots. I figured I'd start with pencil by making a few gestural sketches rather than plunging straight into Procreate on my iPad. My hope is that through this process, my sketches will be a little less stiff and the ideas will flow a bit easier. After making the tiniest bit of headway in the project, I'm starting on a Prismacolor portrait of my mom for Mother's Day. I'll be working from a reference photo I took of her during Christmas and making up all the surrounding elements as well as her clothes as I go along. My mom is an avid gardener, you see, which is part of what got me into hoarding house plants. And spring marks the growing season for us here in New York. My mom has kept a vegetable garden since I was old enough to remember, as well as my papa. Each year, she grows an assortment of fresh cucumbers, string beans, scallions, bok choy, kale, and collard greens. When it's harvest time, my mom often has more vegetables than my family can eat, so she'll leave bags full of vegetables on the doorknobs of neighbors and friends. Because they're harvested straight from the garden, they're more delicious than store-bought. Thus, I wanted to depict her surrounded by a lush and abundant array of foliage. Since there's so much detail involved, I'm trying my best to group disparate elements in terms of color. This means forming shapes of varying greens in contrast to the warm red hues of my mom's silhouette. I 
I feel as though this portrait is different from the color pencil pieces I've worked on before, but I'm happy with the result. I just hope she likes it. <laughs> Over the past month, I also took a last minute solo trip to San Diego. I've gone on a bunch of trips with my friends over the past few years, but this is the first time since 2019 that I'm traveling by myself. I've gotta say, I really missed this. I came here for three things. Sun, a view of the Pacific Ocean, and tacos. Anyway, the first day I landed here, I walked around Balboa Park and visited the Japanese Friendship Garden, then chatted up the koi fish. I also walked a lot on this vacation, about an average of nine miles per day. Ah, the sun sets too. And don't worry, I treated myself to lots of ice cream and gelato. Another thing I went out of my way to do on this trip was to go whale and dolphin watching. I couldn't believe how placid the water surface was in some parts. While we didn't manage to find any whales on this voyage, we did manage to spot a moon jellyfish and plenty of dolphins. Luckily, I come from a long line of mariners, thus my last name, so seasickness wasn't an issue for me. And I made my way to Izola Cafe in downtown San Diego, I know, I know, what does this have to do with drawing? I swear I'm getting to the drawing. See, I did it. Although I didn't go at sunset as I should have, I also visited the sunset cliffs. And you best believe I went down those stairs. I had one more stop along my trip, and that was La Jolla. There I went to the Birch Aquarium to see what the marine life was all about. They had a bit more to say than the koi fish, I'll say that. I'm really gonna miss drinking in the beauty that is the Pacific. To life, back to reality. I'm finishing up the project you saw from the very beginning. The client approved these sketches, so now it's time to build out the final illustrations. Do you ever just give thanks to your past self for making your future self's life a little bit easier? Anyway, I'm glad that I finished all of the flatting for these illustrations on the plane. Thank you, iPad. The topic of this illustration is the cultural anchor of cooking and idealized womanhood. In it, the author writes about her family's non-relationship with food when assimilating into American and then Canadian culture. As an adult, she learned from Asian American cooking bloggers how to prepare lavish feasts with ties to her heritage, but later abandoned those pursuits as a mom with more pressing duties. As a result, I chose to depict a mom that is fine with embracing pizza for dinner as her past self looks on in the window reflection in the midst of preparing one of her big feasts. Using some ink textures that I scanned into Photoshop and keep in my texture library, I'm going to use a clipping mask to make this cutting board look a little bit more like wood. I'll do the same thing with the figure's hair. After adjusting the hue and shade of the hair texture, it's time to add a bit of textured underpainting to larger swabs of color in the illustration. I do this to add some visual interest to the piece as well as liven up the colors. First, I paint over the base color with a slightly lighter, more saturated color. Then, using strokes of varying pressure, I paint over the underpainting, letting only a few glimpses of the brighter color show through. I also went back in and added window panes to make it clear that the character was in front of a window. And 
here's how the final illustrations turned out. Around a month ago, I started a rather large job whose timeline got extended longer and longer as the project progressed. I turned down a few jobs in the midst of working on it only to find out this week that it was being killed. It was quite disappointing. I'm lucky that this has only happened once to me before in my illustration career. And thankfully, my agent negotiated a good kill fee, so I'll at least be paid for some of my efforts. Now that it's been suddenly wrapped up with my other job, I don't have any clients this week and it's a strange feeling. At the same time, I'm taking it as an opportunity to focus on personal projects as well as brushing up my Behance account. I haven't updated it in more than a year, so posting my work is long overdue. Believe it or not, I've had a lot of luck in the past when it comes to clients reaching out to me through my Behance portfolio. I think it also helps to make sure your tags are listed when you upload projects. I always make sure to categorize them under illustration, along with any intersecting categories like motion graphics, as well as which materials I use, such as Photoshop, Wacom Cintiq, iPad Pro, and Procreate. I think this is what has made my projects easier to search and get featured on the main page. Anyway, I'm looking forward to whatever new projects come my way. It's been so long since I've looked at any of these illustrations. It's good to see them again. You spend hours and hours on a piece only to rarely see them when they're complete. Here's one more view of the Pacific as I wrap this up. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.